Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. In every age, there are always people who long for the good old days. And in this age of luxurious sport utility vehicles, what some folks wish for is a simple, rugged machine like the original Willys Jeep. But not even Jeep makes a vehicle that simple anymore. So where do these traditionalists turn? Well, how about towards Russia? Luckily, potential buyers won't have to go to Russia to get their hands on one of these back-to-basic cruisers. Although they've been made in Russia by the Ulyanovsk automobile factory since 1941, these two UAS models will soon make their way to our shores for the debut set for the upcoming New York Auto Show. Now, we gave you a peek at the sport utility model a few months ago, but since then we've had a chance to spend time with this Comrade Red pickup truck. The key to both of these 4x4s is simplicity and durability, but we're hard pressed not to call it crudeness. Whatever you call it, it's hardly high tech. How many other new cars have you seen lately that come with an emergency tire pump, or better yet, a hand crank, which fortunately we didn't really have to use? Other details like the exposed rivets and welds and the bare metal interior make it easy to confuse the truck's uncompromising utility for shoddy workmanship. But don't let its looks fool you. This is one solid truck. We haven't seen a steel body this thick since Ike was in office. Interior amenities are few on both models. Aside from a speedometer and other necessary gauges, the driver needs only worry about wipers, headlights, and heat. The last of which can be a challenge. The climate control system consists of, besides the obvious roll-up windows, a weak fan pushing lukewarm air through a Rube Goldberg assembly of ductwork. How its drivers survived the Siberian winters for 50 years, we'll never know. Now, our test pickup had been converted to LPG as a test for fleet applications. While it ran just fine and it had a good 150 mile range, we still had a few scary moments due to the scarcity of public filling stations. Power for both models will eventually come courtesy of a modern GM 3800 V6. Until then, the motivator is a home market 2.4 liter inline four pumping out 91 horsepower and 127 pound-feet of torque. While that's enough to get the job done, speeding tickets won't be a big worry, as our top speed testing resulted in a whopping 68 miles per hour. Acceleration times were frankly too slow to time. Worth highlighting, though, is the UAS's off-road prowess. The only thing to slow our orange billy goat was an especially slippery mud pit, but even then, it never left us stranded. Road manners were about what we expected, rough as a buckboard for the pickup and somewhat better for the four-door. With the addition of seat belts, crash protection, and other concessions to modern society, the vehicles that eventually go on sale here will be more polished than our Russian spec test vehicle. But no matter how modern the design, any light truck must offer real utility to be successful, and here the Uazes are more than up to par. The pickup's folding side rails make the high bed easier to load, while the sport utility lives up to both names with a convertible top and room for seven. There's little chance of these trucks posing a sales threat to any modern equivalent, but UAS of America hopes these homely haulers will attract farmers, fleets, and those who just want to drive something different. And they've already had a promising number of orders in Central and South America. And with a price target of $12,000 for the four-door and $10,000 for the truck, that's no surprise. Whether more sophisticated U.S. buyers will sign on remains to be seen. But you never know with vehicles like these, they could just become the next status symbols. So take note, Hummer. Make way, Land Rover. Uaz has just hit town. And we'll have more Motor Week right after this. <laughs> 